drunk? Hello, in the past I've made Super Nintendo videos covering every game in a particular genre, like shoot 'em ups or baseball or even pinball games, and it's time to start giving the Sega Genesis the same treatment, starting with every Sega Genesis Disney game. Just gonna do a quick overview of each game, and I'm picking Disney because the Genesis was very well known at the time for having the pick of the litter when it came to Disney stuff, providing examples of licensed games done well. Normally, when I make these videos, they're in alphabetical order, but for this one, let's start out with the most well-known games, then tackle these alphabetically, starting with Castle of Illusion and World of Illusion, starring Mickey Mouse. These were two of the games I was always so, so jealous of as a Super Nintendo owner when I was a kid, and to this day, they're still fantastic playthroughs. Castle of Illusion came first in 1990, developed by Sega themselves, where you play as Mickey in a side-scrolling platformer to try and save Minnie from the evil clutches of the witch Miserable. Miserable? Miserable, get it? Eh. This game is pretty straightforward, but it does all the basics really well. This is a solid game that's still a fun playthrough today, but it's a bit outshined by the sequel, World of Illusion. This time it's Mickey and Donald traversing 15 different levels featuring stuff you'll recognize from tons of different Disney films, everything from Pinocchio to Alice in Wonderland to The Sword in the Stone. This is a great freaking game that looks spectacular, as you can see from the footage here. And again, like Castle of Illusion, it may not be all that innovative when it comes to platforming or gameplay or anything, but it executes the fundamentals as well as any platformer. Plus, it's two-player co-op. You learn new magic spells the further you progress, and there's a fair amount of variety in the level design. This is one of my personal favorite Genesis games, and it might be a bit short and a bit on the easy side, but if you had to pick one game to play out of this list, make sure it's World of Illusion. Let's go through the rest of the Genesis Disney games in alphabetical order, starting with Aladdin. I don't want to get into yet another Aladdin Genesis vs. Super Nintendo argument. They're both good games and you can't go wrong playing either. But the thing is, Disney's own animation team worked directly with the dev team Virgin when making the Genesis edition, and as a result, we get one of the best looking 16-bit games ever. And in addition to that, it uses most of the soundtrack from the movie too. Now, the Genesis Edition can be pretty dang hard at times, like the level inside the lamp, and I think that's why the dev team decided to give Aladdin a sword just to help him out a bit. But yeah, Aladdin is one of those games that just about everyone has played at least once. Pretty much any time you saw a Genesis demo kiosk in a store, the game in there was usually Aladdin. I swear, I played the first level of this game like 50 or 60 times, and hey, it turns out the whole playthrough of this one is well worth it. It's a good time. Next we've got Ariel, the Little Mermaid, developed by Blue Sky Software in 1992. You choose between Ariel and King Triton to swim around and collect stuff and free imprisoned sea creatures and all that. It's your classic old Sega design, kind of like games like X-Men or Vector Man where you're given these ginormous levels to explore and just find stuff and then find the exit. This game is okay, the controls and hit detection are definitely wonky and take a bit of getting used to, but I wouldn't call this game bad, just kind of annoying. Capcom made a much better Little Mermaid game for NES if that's the kind of thing you're looking for. Moving on to Beauty and the Beast, which received two games on Genesis, Belle's Quest and Roar of the Beast. And yep, these two check all the boxes for what they were supposed to do. They represent the source material well enough, with some good artwork and sprite animation, but there's not nearly enough going on in either of these games to look for anything past that, like with Aladdin or the two Mickey games. Belle's Quest is a more laid-back game where you play as Belle, and Roar the Beast is more action-oriented where you play as the Beast. Belle's Quest is more of an adventure-style game where you wander around and find objects and use them to find more objects and all that. It's pretty dull. Roar the Beast is similar to the Super Nintendo Beauty and the Beast game, and it's extremely standard stuff for the time. Just walk to the right and kill stuff as the Beast. These two games accomplished exactly what they set out to do back then when they were first released, which is to just represent the movie in two unique ways, but playing them now, they're both pretty dull and you can find much better. Next we have Bonkers, based on the Disney Afternoon cartoon developed by Sega in 1994. This is one of those franchises that got completely different games on Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis, and unfortunately in this case the Super Nintendo version is a lot better. The Sega version is split up into four different mini-games. One has you throwing donuts at thieves trying to steal stuff from a museum. One has you throwing bricks to build a wall to stop a machine from throwing trash at you. The third one has you smashing boxes to find items. And the fourth is combat racing from a top-down perspective. 
Each of these mini-games has 15 rounds each, and yeah, that's all this game is. Pretty dull. I will say the combat racing one can be pretty fun, but the rest are boring and repetitive. You're much better off playing the Capcom game on Super Nintendo. Fantasia is a Genesis exclusive based on the movie and made by Infograms in November of 1991. It's a side-scrolling platformer with only four levels, and this one is rough. The game looks great, the enemy sprites look good, the backgrounds are nice looking, and the game matches the movie reasonably well, but geez, the way Mickey controls is just awful. There's a lot of really difficult platforming here, but Mickey's jump is just the worst. It's one of those slow, floaty jumps that takes a ton of practice to get right, and this is a game where it's just not worth all the time you'd have to put in to get the hang of it. I'd avoid this one. Here's a good one, it's Gargoyles, based on the syndicated cartoon that ran for 78 episodes. This one was made by Disney Interactive, comprised of many of the same folks who worked on games like Aladdin and The Lion King, made in November of 1995, so this is pretty late for a Genesis release, and you can tell because the look and atmosphere of this game captures the show so well. You play as Goliath through five levels, which loosely follows the story of the show. Goliath has a bunch of attacks, it can climb walls and double jump, it kind of plays like a more energetic version of Demon's Crest. Although I will say that game has a bit more polish, and be forewarned, Gargoyles does get really tough as you progress. But still, this is easily one of the better games on this list. It's a fun one to play through, especially fun if you enjoyed the original cartoon at the time. Another Genesis exclusive is Goofy's Hysterical History Tour, made by Absolute Entertainment in September 1993. This one has Goofy working as a janitor in a history museum run by Ludwig von Drake, except Goofy has a rival janitor, and it's the evil Pete, who makes things a mess for Goofy in the hopes of getting him fired. So Goofy has to go through each exhibit and make things right again. It's an action platformer with Goofy's main mechanic being the Extendo Hand, which works similarly to Ristar so you can climb and swing from all sorts of different platforms. The problem is, however, the controls are terrible. Goofy is a big lumbering sprite with all sorts of extra frames of animation, so even jumping in this game becomes a chore. Your main attack with the glove is to throw balls at enemies, and it's just poorly implemented. Half the time, I have no idea where the ball is going. You do get other limited power-ups for your extendo hand, like a boxing glove, but they're short-lived. I would have to put Goofy's Hysterical History Tour at the lower end of the list of games in this video. It would be a lot better if the controls actually cooperated. The Great Circus Mystery starring Mickey and Minnie was released by Capcom for both Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo in October of 1994, and it's a sequel to Mickey's Magical Quest for Super Nintendo. This is a solid game, whichever system you pick. It's got that 16-bit Capcom polish to it. The game looks and sounds great, and the controls are immediate and easy to get the hang of very quickly. Just like in Mickey's Magical Quest, the most fun stuff here comes in the form of power-ups, the level design, and themes. Plus, this one is two-player co-op, which is fun. The only problem with the game is that it's way too easy and way too short. It's like someone out there complained that Magical Quest was too hard or something, so they set out to make a game that's even more kid-friendly. That's fine at all, just keep your expectations in check going into this one. It's a very good game, but it's over before you know it. Another game that got a release on both Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo is The Jungle Book, with the game originally being made for Genesis in July of 1994, with the developer being listed as Eurocom Entertainment, but in reality, most of the work was done by the people that went on to form Shiny Entertainment, who consist of many of the same folks that worked on Aladdin, and later went on to make Earthworm Jim. So as you might expect, the graphics and sprite work here are the number one strength this game has going for it. You play as Mowgli, of course, throwing bananas and jumping around each gigantic level, yup, it's that classic Sega level design again. You don't simply run from left to right here, you gotta climb and jump all over the place. Sometimes you have to collect gems, sometimes you defeat a boss from the movie. This is a great looking game that holds up well today, and the Genesis version is definitely the better game. I recommend this one.
Oh boy, here we go. We've gotten to Lion King, one of the most infuriatingly difficult games on either Genesis or Super Nintendo, released in November 1994 by Virgin Interactive. Once again, the sprites and backgrounds here are actually drawn by Disney animators, so the game looks fantastic from start to finish, and it's an excellent representation of the movie's world. You play as Little Simba before you become Older Simba as you fight your way back to the kingdom to defeat Scar. But geez louise, the path to get there is brutal. There's this infamous lava level called Be Prepared, where you fight these cheetahs while jumping across lava on these tiny platforms. There's this stupid monkey maze. There's the rhino tails. Ugh. This game has a lot going for it, with the music, sound, and graphics being top notch. But just to let you know, this game is still just as hard now as it was then, so be forewarned. Next is a game that was released very late in the Genesis lifespan, Marsupilami, made by Apache Software in October of 1995 in PAL regions before getting a US release the next year. For those unfamiliar, Marsupilami was a Disney Saturday morning cartoon for a brief period in 1993 and it only ran for 13 episodes, but it still managed to get its own Genesis game. Your character is a little guy with a really long tail that you use to whip enemies and complete escort missions like this one where your tail becomes stairs. There's really not much to this game, it's a really short playthrough. My only real complaint here is that the camera drifts all over the place and makes me dizzy after a while. Other than that, this one is just kinda sorta barely average. It's not great, but it's not bad either. Another Disney Interactive developed game is Maui Mallard in Cold Shadow, developed for Sega Genesis in December of 1995, and I hate to sound like a broken record, but the visuals here steal the show. They're some of the best of the era. This is another action platformer, but the main mechanic of this one is the ability to switch between Maui Mallard, who's pretty much just Donald Duck as a detective in a Hawaiian shirt, and Cold Shadow, a brutal and ruthless ninja. My only issue with this one is how drifty the camera can get. Again, it kind of makes me nauseous after a while, but otherwise, this one is a ton of fun. A lot of imagination went into this game. The artwork and sprites are spectacular looking, and for a Disney game, it represents a decent challenge. Definitely check this one out. Mickey Mania, The Timeless Adventures of Mickey Mouse is a really cool idea for a game. It's a side-scroller that has you play as Mickey throughout some of his old cartoon adventures. It was developed by Traveler's Tales in November of 1994, made for both Genesis and Super Nintendo, and I have to point out that the Genesis version is an easy choice as the better game. There's an extra level, there's better visuals, and no annoying load times. This game is a bit polarizing, some people don't like it because the difficulty can be pretty cheap, but I still think this one is well worth checking out on Genesis. Thematically, this is one of the most ambitious titles of the 16-bit era. It is really cool to see all the different settings from different cartoons, as well as change of pace levels like this. So despite how frustrating this one can get, I still say this one is worth playing. Here's another one that got releases on both SNES and Genesis, Mickey's Ultimate Challenge, although this one is clearly intended for a much younger audience, and the game is basically the same on both consoles. The idea here is that you complete a series of puzzles in order to collect magic beans so you can plant a beanstalk, climb up and fight the giants, and you do that by uh, solving even more puzzles. This is one of those games that's clearly intended for younger kids that wouldn't otherwise be into video games. It probably did the job for its time, but there are much better options out there nowadays. One more game that got a Genesis and Super Nintendo release was Pinocchio, and we're starting to get to the point of the video where it's hard not to repeat myself. This is another one that has great visuals, courtesy of Virgin Interactive, and it's another one where that's the main selling point because the game itself is just okay. It's very standard platforming stuff where you wander around collecting things to unlock the next level, and it follows the events of the movie reasonably well. It's just a very, very average game with some fantastic graphics that bump it up a notch. Pocahontas is a Disney Interactive game made in January of 1996. Yes, that's right, they were still cranking out Genesis games that late. And this game is actually pretty dang good. You play as Pocahontas, of course, but you also have Miko to help you. You press the C button to switch between characters, and you gotta work together to solve puzzles. It starts out extremely simple, but it gets surprisingly tough the further you play. Throughout your playthrough, Pocahontas will meet spirit animals that give her new abilities like running faster, jumping higher, swimming, finding special items, talking to Grandmother Willow, on and on. 
I wasn't sure what I was expecting from this one, but it's actually a very good playthrough, and of course it goes without saying at this point that the graphics are just gorgeous. I would say you should definitely check this one out. Here's another favorite of mine, it's Quackshot starring Donald Duck, developed by Sega in December of 1991. As a Super Nintendo kid, this was one of those games I was extremely jealous of. You play as Donald on a treasure hunt while being pursued by the evil Pete. And I love the feel of the controls, the original story here is great, the music is fantastic, and to me this game was the total package. Playing it now, the game does show its age a little bit. Compared to most of the other games on this list, it's paced a little slowly. But man, once you open up the temple, then the game really gets going, and it's a lot of fun. I think my favorite thing is that Donald has a temper meter. If you find enough hot peppers laying around, Donald will have one of his classic tantrums and destroy anything in his path. It's great. This is one of my personal favorite Genesis games. Another Disney afternoon show that got its own Genesis game is Tailspin, developed by Sega in November of 1992. This one is hit or miss. The game starts out with a series of platforming stages where you play as Kit, and as you can see, the graphics here just look off. Everything is dark for some reason, to the point that it can be difficult to see enemies and projectiles. It's kinda disappointing. But then you get to the flying stages, where you've got Baloo flying the sea duck with Kit hanging on behind, firing stuff at enemies that come from everywhere. But then you're back in these dreary looking platforming stages. I'd recommend this one if it had more of the flying stages, but as it is, I'd say give it a pass. Finally, last but not least, here's Toy Story, made by Traveler's Tales in November of 1995. And if you've played the Super Nintendo version of this one, then you've played the Genesis version. They're very similar games, and by that I mean they're both really, really hard. The Genesis edition does have an extra level, so it's got that going for it, I suppose. And this game is an excellent representation of the source material, and I love the amount of gameplay variety here, like these racing levels. And there's even a few first-person perspective levels, and they look decided decidedly better on Genesis than they do on Super Nintendo. The main thing this game has going against it is the extremely cheap difficulty. This is one frustrating playthrough to say the least, but I would not call it a bad game by any stretch. If anything, it's a curiosity that's worth checking out to see if it's up your alley. Whew, okay, that's all of them. If I had to pick the five best out of this list, I'm gonna go with Castle of Illusion, World of Illusion, Quackshot, Gargoyles, and believe it or not, Pocahontas, with Aladdin and Maui Mallard both being really solid playthroughs. If you haven't already, make sure to check those games out. And of course, I want to thank you for watching all this, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.